All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Emma. Hi, I'm Hannah. And we work for Action for Conservation, a youth environmental education charity that works with young people across the country to empower them to learn more about the planet and conservation and to take action on some of the most pressing issues. So welcome to our session, um, Beyond the Bubble Collaboration for a Sustainable Future. So what we're going to be covering in the next 20 minutes is, do environmental issues affect us all equally? How can we collaborate for a sustainable future? And then looking at um, how you can take action for a sustainable future. So we want to start you off with a quick question. Um, and you can pop your answers um, to this question into the Slido chat. Um, or you can um, pause the video if you're not watching this live. Pause the video um, and have a chat with your um, classmates or friends about um, your thoughts on this question. So, do you think all people are impacted by environmental issues equally? Um, and I'll leave that with you and Hannah's going to look a little bit more into that now. Yeah, so it's um, it's definitely a big question. Um, and so in order for us to kind of unpick this and try and answer it, um, I'm going to show you two case studies um, that kind of help us think about that. So the first is on air pollution um, and in order for us to sort of understand the case study about air pollution um, it's probably a good idea that we understand what air pollution is first um, so you can see on this screen feel free to pause it if you aren't watching live and have a, a really good read through um, the bold text um, kind of indicates the keywords for you um, so what is air pollution well it's when fossil fuels um, like carbon dioxide are released in a burnt and released into the atmosphere uh, and then this leads to the greenhouse effect and also leads to climate change um, and it's also so when um, things like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are released, which can cause phenomena like acid rain. Um, and also air pollution can contribute to things like smog that we see in our cities. Um, and also that links to things um, like how air pollution impacts our health. And so it can worse make worse in health conditions and things like make things like asthma worse and kind of create illnesses um, so we know what air pollution is now so it, it isn't great for the environment and it also isn't great for us um, so let's have a little ooh, let's have a little think um, about the case study so this on the right you can see that there is a map of England so you can see it's got some um, cities outlined there you can see London on it and Newcastle and Birmingham um, so what does the map show um, so the red areas on the map show the areas where there are highest levels of pollution. And we can see that that actually is in line with where those cities are. So the urban areas tend to be the areas that have the higher levels of air pollution. The blue areas, so you can see in the northwest, you've got that big area, big, big blue area in Cumbria. Um, and in the southwest, so you can see that big area in kind of Devon and Cornwall. Um, those blue areas are areas of low um, levels of air pollution. Um, OK, so we know that um, cities are affected worse than um, kind of rural areas. Um, what does that have to do with equality? Well, it actually has quite a lot to do with equality. Um, so the most deprived 20% of neighbourhoods um, had high air pollution levels than the least deprived neighbourhoods. Um, so that means that if you kind of earn more money or you have more money, then you're probably more likely to live in an area where air pollution isn't so much of a problem. And if you don't have a huge amount of money, then you're more likely to live in a neighbourhood that probably does have air pollution as a problem. Um, and we can see that actually there's the biggest difference in air pollution levels according to socioeconomic status. So kind of how wealthy people are um, and kind of where they sit in social statuses. Um, was actually found in London. Um, so we know that air pollution impacts us in terms of how, how wealthy we are, but um, is there anything else distinguishable um, about the groups of people that are most affected? So is it just about how much money you have or is there anything else going on there? Um, and so keep an eye on that air pollution map on the right hand side. Um, so the answer is yes, there are other distinguishable um, things that we, we know. So um, a new study has found big differences in air pollution across communities in England. So the next question is, if we know that there are different groups affected, who are the people that are worst affected by this? Well, 
Areas where 20% or more of the population are made up of people from ethnic minority backgrounds, that could be black people, that could be Asian people, or other people that identify as being from an ethnic minority background, are worst affected, as are children and elderly people. So I want you to have a really quick look at this map. So it's basically the same map of the one I showed you before, but this time we're looking at where people, where communities Kind of what the community makeup is rather so you can see that the light gray areas are where the communities are mainly made up of white communities um, and you can see that where the darker gray areas are are where communities have more than 20 percent of people in them that are kind of a mix of different minority backgrounds and, and different communities and you can see that those actually line up with where the air pollution levels are um, in the city so you can see london has a big um, population of people that are from different ethnic minority backgrounds and you can see that that is an area where there is worse air pollution. So we know that that actually does have an impact. Um, so what does that mean for the impacts um, for these communities? What does air pollution actually, these high levels of air pollution mean for their lives? Well, air pollution, if we think about our health, air pollution and public health. Um, so we've already talked about children and the elderly. So children's lungs and, and systems are developing. So that is one thing that can be quite harmful. Um, and also elderly people may be more likely to be at risk of certain um, diseases and health conditions. And so they, those two groups of people are really, really um, at risk. Um, so what does air pollution impact? Well, it impacts our, our cardiovascular system, which is our, our heart system. The system um, means that long-term exposure to air pollutants can cause heart disease and also make heart disease conditions worse um, and then the respiratory uh, system which is the system that your um, of your lungs and kind of air and oxygen in your body um, and long-term exposure to air pollutants can cause lung diseases and make diseases like asthma worse um, so we can see that actually it has a really really big impact on our health um, and it's actually estimated that long-term exposure to man-made air pollution in the UK contributes between 28,000 and 36,000 deaths each year. So actually it has a massive, massive impact on, on our lives and especially on the people that are living in, air, in areas where there is high air pollution levels. Um, so what can we what so what can we kind of do to help tackle air pollution? Um, well, one thing maybe to think about is having more spaces like parks um, and green spaces with trees and plants. So we know that trees and plants um, take in carbon dioxide and they release oxygen, so they literally clean our air for us. Um, so let's have a think about um, those spaces. Um, do all people have the same access to these green spaces? So if this is the solution, are we all able to access these green spaces equally? The answer is no, we're not. Um, so a recent survey was done um, talking to people about their access to green spaces and 57% of British adults were actually found to live within a five minute walk of a local park. So that's kind of over half, so that seems sort of okay. But then when you break that down, um, only 39% of people from ethnic minority backgrounds were found to live um, close to a local green space. Well, so what that actually shows is that less than half of um, people from those backgrounds have access to those spaces. Um, so less than their white counterparts. And 42% of people from ethnic minority backgrounds live in England's most green space deprived neighbourhoods. So what does that mean? That means areas with no green space or where it's inadequate green space. So it might not be cared for. Or there might be no investment to improve it or look after it. And so what does that mean for those people? Well, it means that there's um, a real limit to kind of how they are able to um, access nature. And also nature, we know, helps with our mental and physical well-being. So we can see that the path to equal access to green spaces has a long way to go and there's a lot of work to be done to make sure we're all accessing it equally. Um, and the last thing I kind of want to touch on is the impact of COVID and how um, COVID kind of ties together these two case studies. So we know that COVID-19, when it it is very bad for people, it impacts their lungs. Um, and so air pollution is likely to increase the number um, of people with COVID-19 infections and how severe those infections um, are. In addition to that, um, the government released a report earlier in the summer about why COVID-19 was disproportionately affecting people of colour. Um, and so that was something that was seen um, that they were being disproportionately affected and it was affecting those communities more severely and actually in that report mentions of air pollution were left out and so that really asks the question of why were they left out if we know that those communities are actually disproportionately affected 
by air pollution. Um, and then lastly, um, we've already learned that people of colour are less likely to live near adequate green spaces and so they have less equal access to those spaces. And if you think about when we were all locked down and we weren't allowed to leave our homes as we are now, if you don't live near somewhere with, where there's a, a nice green space for you to go for a lunchtime walk or get some exercise, that is going to have a really big impact on your mental and physical well-being. Um, and so actually these environmental issues really link to these social um, and class issues about who has access to green space and who is being most affected by environmental issues. Um, so I'm going to pass back to Emma now. Cool, thank you Hannah. Um, so let's take a look back at the question that we posed at the beginning of the session. Has anyone changed their answer or perhaps you've had your answer confirmed? From these case studies, we can see how people are disproportionately affected. Um, and we've got a couple of answers through, so I'll read through some of your answers. Um, poor and vulnerable people are more impacted and less able to adapt. Um, those who have contributed the least are impacted the most, which is really interesting to look at. Um, some rich countries have enough money to ship their rubbish abroad and consume more than others who have to pay the price. Um, uh, young people and poor are detrimentally affected by ecological problems. So there's a generally an agreement sort of with what Hannah um, has run through and echoed those case studies. Um, so now let's explore the solutions and see and see how um, what he's proposing could work. Um, first, I just want to touch on a few of the words that, that he mentioned. So we've got coalition and progressive allies and what they mean. Um, so a coalition is the act of assembling people or elements into an order for a specific purpose. In this case, for climate justice for all. And a progressive ally is someone who seeks to correct any injustices in a society, regardless of their own background. So how can we make the solution that David put forward happen? Um, the first step is a recognition that the climate movement is not only about protecting the planet, it's also about caring about the people who live on the planet. So often environmental policies and actions are put into place without consideration for the communities they might negatively affect. So actions taken need to protect both the planet and the people. Um, second is the creation of an expansion of the green job industry, from planting trees to insulating buildings and working on green technologies. These would be in place of the bigger consumption industry roles and include fair wage, respect and support for everyone involved in all stages of the production process. Third, um, more consultations of the local communities, posing questions like what are the local issues? Where are the green spaces needed? Um, when decision making is being made um, about an area, power should be given back to the local people. Often scientific evidence is taken into account and not traditional and indigenous knowledge. Um, and fourth, more black leaders and representation in the movement. The conservation sector is the second least diverse sector in the UK after farming. Um, there are incredible people from ethnic minority backgrounds who are scientists, activists and environmentalists working in the sector. Here are just a handful that we have come across at Action for Conservation. Often these people have been working tirelessly in the sector but have just haven't been recognised in the same way their white counterparts have. Can you think of any you've come across lately? Perhaps someone who's inspired you on Instagram or on a news report. Okay, so we've looked at the larger changes we need to make as a society, um, but what can we do as individuals? Um, there's an array of options. Um, so we've listed some here for you. Um, if you're watching this as a recorded a video, maybe pause it here, have a read, have a talk with your class about other solutions that you could take as an individual. Um, so first off, we've got, oh, pop back to the other oh, side. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, so listen to the experiences of those from um, around you from different backgrounds. Um, this is really important. Obviously, Hannah and I are two white women and our experiences are very different from those from minority ethnic backgrounds. Um, so this point is really important and shouldn't be understated. In order for us to drive ethnic change, we must listen and act on the experiences of those from different backgrounds. Um, next, increase your awareness of environmental laws. Ask yourselves how they might impact different groups. Um, you can look into the work um, Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth are doing. Um, they're doing a lot of work in terms of changing laws. Um, next, we have volunteer in your community. Help, um, for example, help to create and improve local green spaces. Um, next up, and this links really well into what would have been happening right now is the COP. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but rallying the leaders, make sure they know what you care about and how, what changes you want to see. 
Um, next, research things like the Green New Deal. That might be something you've not heard of before. Give it a search. Um, what do you like about it? Could you write to your MP and ask them to support it? And lastly, diversify who teaches you about environmental issues. This could include following new campaigns, activists, organisations and supporting their work. And not just ones that are in your local area, but also looking at what's in the global south too. So you have a really nice view of everything that's going on in the world. And um, you can also watch videos and documentaries. Um, and most of all, make sure you share your findings with those around you. Um, and if we have time, I think we've got time for this very quick video. Um, I know I mentioned Friends of the Earth just then. Um, and here's a really nice video that they've made um, that echoes um, quite well with what are the messages we are putting across in today's session. Normal doesn't work. Normal treat is some people as disposable and the planet as disposable too. As we start to rebuild after the devastation of coronavirus, we are at a crossroads. Do we go back to a world close to a climate and ecological breakdown and with increasing gaps between rich and poor? Or do we move forwards to a better future so it works for all of us? Let's improve health and wellbeing by making sure everyone has access to green space, clean air and cheap low carbon transport. And we can place green jobs at the heart of the recovery and help train workers from polluting industries into clean ones. Let's remove tax breaks from big polluters and stop spending on climate record infrastructure to help fund the transformative solutions we need. Our government responded to the pandemic as an emergency. Now they must deliver a recovery that secures a greener, fairer world that leaves no one behind. We've imagined a better future. Now it's time to build it. Normal doesn't... Okay. Fab, I'm going to pass back over to Hannah to sort of round up the Normal does Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Um, amazing. So um, after our session, we've got a couple of little tasks um, for you. So this is one of the, the first ones. Um, we want you as a class or with your friends, whoever you're watching with, um, to sort of think about what is the one thing you want world leaders to do to kind of commit to at COP26? Um, and the second is what is your vision for the world? So what's the thing you, what's the way you want the world to be in the future? So you can answer some of your, you can answer some of your comments now in Slido and we'd love to hear what your answers are. So if you're watching live and you're not quite sure, feel free to email us afterwards. Or if you are have, watching a recorded version of this, maybe collate your answers as a class and send us an email because we'd love to hear, um, hear what you think. Um, and one top tip is to be quite specific with your points. So maybe think beyond stopping climate change and just try and be really really specific um, on the next slide i've got some examples of um what some young people that we work with so these are afc ambassadors ria and serena so again um have a little glance watch over the recording um, and have a more detailed view of it um, i'll give you some highlights so ria wants a world um, where intrinsic value of nature is common knowledge and where people and animals can coexist um, and Serena wants a world that um, where governments are more proactive to remove systemic discrimination and increase protection laws for minor minorities um, and also see you know a transition to a green and just economy and she'd also love to see climate justice and climate change um, be embedded into the curriculum so these are some really specific asks that you can maybe think about maybe you like these as well um, and then finally, I'm going to leave you with um, the three points um, that I think everyone's been leaving at the end of their session. So um, our Action for Conservation, um, along with our ambassadors, our, vi our vision for the world is one where every young person is moved and empowered to protect the natural world, where all people have equal access to enjoy and learn about nature, where the most vulnerable people across the world are supported and protected from the climate crisis, and where we transition to green, just economies that allow people and nature to coexist. An extra action that you can take um, going forward, maybe this is something you want to do for a longer period of time at school, is to research an environment mental issue so it could be air pollution like we've talked about or it could be something like fast fashion um, and think about how does this top topic impact different groups of people uh, and what are some of the solutions for tackling this issue and it's always really important as Emma said to share what you find with your friends and family so that the knowledge is being spread across everybody and then lastly our call for world leaders at COP26 is to implement stricter regulations on big companies to protect habitats people and natural resources invest in climate education so young people understand how climate change links to social justice issues like racism, sexism and classism like we've discussed today. Um, so yeah, 
thank you very much for joining our session or thank you for watching again um, we hope it's been informative and that you've um got something yeah you've learned some stuff from it thanks for joining everyone thanks See you so later. much <laughs> bye